Today we will be solving this problem called distributing apples. So there are n children and m apples that will be distributed to them. Our task is to count the number of ways this can be done. For example, if n equals 3 and m equals 2, there are 6 ways to distribute the two apples. So the first line of our input will contain two integers n and m, both up to a million. Then we have to output the number of ways modulo a billion and 7. So let's head to the drawing board and see how we can solve this problem. So in this example, we have three children and two apples. And these are the six ways to distribute the two apples among the three children. And instead of representing these distributions with numbers like this, why don't we go and see what that would look like if we represented these distributions in a more visual way. So I'll divide this area into three parts. This part corresponds to the first child, this part to the second, and this third part to the third child. So in the first example, only the third child gets two apples. In this second example, this child gets one apple and this child gets another apple. Here, both apples go to the middle child. Here we have one here and one here. Here we have one here and one here. And finally, here we have two apples for the first child. So if we go ahead and break down this representation for each distribution, we will get this for the first distribution. So we will get a bar, a bar, and then two apples. Here we'll get a bar, an apple, a bar, and another apple. Here we will get a bar, two apples, and then a bar. Here we'll get an apple, a bar, another bar, and then an apple. And here we'll get an apple, a bar, an apple, a bar, and then nothing. And finally here we'll get two apples and then two bars. So we can notice that the length of each representation is equal along all the distributions and in each distribution we have two bars and two apples and we know that this the number of apples comes from the uh, from what was given to us and this number of bars represent the delimiters needed to separate between three children so if we have n children, we would require n minus 1 bars to separate between them. And if you notice here, we can reformulate our problem as a combinatorial problem. So basically, we know that our uh, string, let's call this a string, is of length 4. And we have two bars. So all what we have to do is select the position of these two bars. For example, if I choose to put a bar here and a bar here, then automatically the other spots will have apples in them. And since there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between this and our solutions, then the solution to our problem is just choosing the n minus 1 positions out of the n plus m minus 1 positions to put the sticks in. So our final answer will be just equal to the binomial coefficient of n plus m minus 1, choose n minus 1, which is also equal to n plus m minus 1, choose m. So we either going to choose the positions where to put the n minus 1 sticks or choose the positions where to pick the m apples. And as we saw in previous problems, we can compute the binomial coefficient by first computing the factorial of all numbers up to n plus m minus 1. And we do this recursively by calculating the factorial of i would be just equal to i times the factorial of i minus 1. And since this is equal, since the binomial coefficient of AB is equal to A factorial divided by B factorial times A minus B factorial, and we want to calculate this modulo our prime number, then we need to bring this to the numerator, and we do that by multiplying by the modular inverse of this. And as we saw in previous problems, this was equal to 
the modular exponentiation of this raised to mod minus 2. And I invite you to watch the videos in the description box if you don't know why this is the case. So that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and check out our solution. So this is our program. We we'll start by defining our modulo to be equal to a billion and seven. Then uh, we will use the modular binary exponentiation function from previous problems. And this will allow us to compute the modular inverse of the factorials. Then we will read our a and b. And we will declare a vector of size a plus b. Because remember here the factorial we will need to compute will be of size n plus m minus 1. So it is enough to go up to n plus m since this is zero indexed. So we declare a vector of size a plus b. We initialize factorial of 0 with 1 and then we calculate the factorial of other numbers recursively. And then at the end we will just output the binomial coefficient n plus m minus 1. Choose n minus 1 which is going to be equal to n plus m minus 1 factorial. So that's what we have here. So the factorial of a plus b minus 1 and then we will have to multiply this by the modular inverse of b factorial times the modular inverse of a minus b factorial and in this case it's gonna be the modular inverse of n minus 1 times the modular inverse of m and that's precisely what we have here so it's gonna be times the modular inverse of the factorial of b and we calculate that by computing the modular binary exponentiation of that raised to modulo minus 2 and we do the same thing with a minus 1 and that's gonna be our final answer so let's go ahead and submit so that worked thank you very much for watching see you in the next video bye bye